So Judy, if April showers bring May flowers, what do May showers bring? All right, and that's easy. A new episode of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. We're at Wavre Farms and they, like many of our garden centers around the area, are full of color just for you. Coming up in the show, we'll be talking to Diane at Wavre Farms about some of the great new colors out there. We'll also be showing you how to get rid of moss. We'll also talk about what to do with squirrels. But coming up first, it's all about fuchsias. As gardeners, we all love fuchsias, being hanging baskets or in the ground. Well, I'm with Teo from the Oregon Fuchsia Society, and so Teo, we need to learn so much about fuchsias because it's really going to be fuchsia season pretty soon. Uh, hopefully pretty soon. <laughs> it's been so cold. It's nothing been very is, cold. Nothing is really as exuberant as it was this time last year. Yeah, so. but really, the garden centers are chalk-filled, the hanging baskets are gorgeous, and the hardy ones are just starting to come up. Mm -hmm. So if you can give us some tips about, maybe let's start with hanging baskets first um, well hanging baskets are, are great keep them uh, keep them in a spot where uh, initially where there's not too much Sun you want to uh, they, many of them just come out of the greenhouse and uh, also one of the tips is to make sure they stay evenly moist don't let them dry out fuchsias don't react well especially in hanging baskets when they dry out, the uh, leaves will turn yellow and uh, uh, the buds will drop. Uh -huh. And then it takes quite a while for them to recover. Um, keep the basket itself out of the sun that, so that, uh, uh, so that the, uh, the roots themselves don't heat up. And uh, um, that's about it. Feed, uh -huh. uh, you don't really need to feed them that much. People think, oh, I've got to feed plants and uh, they overfeed them. But um, that's, that's about the, the hanging baskets. Ah, so pretty yeah. easy. So that's really yeah. great to know. Mm -hmm. So, and I know that um, you are just the, the lover of um, hardy ones because uh -huh. you have 300 plants at your place? Uh, over 300. <laughs> I, I, uh, I've added a few since I took my last inventory. Unfortunately, most of them are sitting in pots at home waiting to go into the ground. Uh, well, I'm doing a whole makeover of uh, a showcase of hardy fuchsias, oh, I hope. How fun. Well, so then we have the expert here to tell us all about them. So hardy fuchsias, I think that that's wonderful because I love to have that kind of a shrub. It's almost like a shrub in mm -hmm. our garden and they bloom such a long time. Mm -hmm. They'll bloom from uh, whenever they, uh, whenever they, ever they get up and growing. Things right. aren't quite, uh, right. quite as far along this year. Um, they'll bloom right till the um, first uh, significant frost kills them. Uh, and so uh, some planting tips for us? Planting tips. Um, cite, them, uh, cite them well um, to get them off to a good growing. Uh, select plants that, have a, a, that, are, that are larger, that are in at least a gallon pot when you plant them um, with a good vigorous root system. You want to make sure that the plant gets through that, that first year. Plant early in the season. That way it has the summer to grow through and establish itself. Um, plant fuchsias deeply. Um, like tomatoes, wow. uh, they uh, they they appreciate that uh, uh, that siding that and they'll root from the stems. They appreciate that little protection from the frost that uh, that happens uh, uh, so that so that they don't uh, freeze deeply. They will root from the stems and they will also send up new shoots from below the from below the ground. Wow, so it really gets them to be mm -hmm. really robust. Yes, yes, that's what you want to do. Get them get them off to a, a great start. Um, also site them in a spot that's not wet in the winter. Okay, so good drainage. Fuchsia's good drainage. Fuchsia's like a spot that's evenly moist but well drained. Um, again, like the hanging baskets, they appreciate that. Um, also, also uh, um, and the light. The light is uh, they'll they'll take full sun in the Pacific Northwest. Oh, wonderful! If we were in the East Coast, I would say afternoon shade is essential. Um, but in the Pacific Northwest, most of them will take full sun. Perfect. So and so we are at this wonderful campus, the Western Seminary campus, and you have a little display garden mm -hmm. here. So really, you're invited to come and see that. Mm -hmm. And today is really a special day for the society. So what's going on today? Um, today we will be having our annual fuchsia plant sale at, uh, at Trans uh, uh, Auto Services, so uh, come on by. 
and that's not too far from the seminary. We'll have all that in, um, information on our website. And also, you're, um, you meet here at the seminary, and so you're invited to come in and join and enjoy these meetings or even join the society. We meet every month on the third Tuesday. So um, if you're interested in fuchsias, come on by, check us out. You don't have to join right away. We, will, uh, <laughs> we, we won't twist your arm too hard. Oh, right. But we have an amazing group of people with decades, literally, probably centuries of experience growing <laughs> fuchsias in Portland, <laughs> cumulatively. Uh, so, you know, if you want to be a collector or you just want a few fuchsias in your garden, so maybe stop by at the plant sale today and get some fuchsias for your garden. Thanks so much, Teo. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs>Since 1982, The Wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, The Wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terra Casa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terra Casa. Terra Casa in downtown Damascus. Build a beautiful home inside and out at French Prairie Perennials. Inside, we have just the right creative elements to complete your decor. We offer an oasis of unusual, nature-inspired garden and home gifts and accessories. Outside, choose from our wide selection of unique dwarf conifers and sparkling companion plants. French Prairie Perennials, located between Woodburn and Wilsonville. Take exit 278 to Aurora and French Prairie Perennials. For 95 years and four generations, Shriners Gardens has been hybridizing and growing award-winning iris. With the largest selection available, Shriners Gardens online catalog hosts hundreds of varieties from classic bearded iris, reblooming and fragrant iris, dwarf iris, and more. Also available online, hybrid daylilies. Shriners Gardens, bringing a rainbow of color to gardens everywhere since 1935. Online at ShrinersGardens.com. I'm down here at Waver Farms I'm with Diane. Diane, it is spring and it's full of color and you have the color. We do. We have so much color from the baskets to the basket stuffers to the tables. There's just a lot going on down here at Wavra. There is, you know, and Proven Winners brands, you know, we see a sea of it. Proven Winners is a great brand that's been around for a long time mm -hmm. and you do well with it. We do. And you have a lot of new varieties that have come we out do. in the Proven Winners brand. So year. we've done Proven Winners for a long time and in the past our Proven Winners have been mixed in with our petunias or the different areas in the greenhouse and this year we decided to make it easier for our customers to find and so we kind of did a Proven Winner section here in the greenhouse just yeah. to make it easier for those customers who are looking for proven winners. Right, because they do come in. They do, they're they looking do. for the pot, they're looking for the tag, and they're Correct. looking for the plants. Correct, and so it just makes it much easier. So today I thought we'd just kind of talk about some of the new ones that we have. Sure, so let's just start down at your end down there. Fantastic, so this is a fun new one. This is called Flambe Yellow. And the nice thing about this little plant is it's drought tolerant, it's heat tolerant, and yet again, it's hardy to 30 degrees. Oh, wow. So it's something that you could easily put in a container with some petunias, some million bells. When those kind of fizzle out the beginning of November, right. stuff some pansies in and have a container and that's, that's going to pull that's gonna you through. Going. So that's a, definitely. That's a great, 
great trait for that. And you don't have to deadhead. So, I mean, who loves that? Better yet. So I know we're kind of focusing on some drought tolerant. Hopefully that is going to happen soon. (laughs) So we have a new little verbena called Cake Pops. And this is great for a little basket. There's no deadheading. And it's perfect for attracting the birds, the bees, and it's just a wonderful little plant. Yeah, another good good heat tolerant. Yes, Yes, and no deadheading as well. So... Let's go some bright yellow again. So this here is called Lady Bird. So it's like in the Texas primrose family. Okay. Again, heat tolerant, drought tolerant, perfect in a basket, especially if you're going to be gone on a weekend. Right. You don't right. have to worry about keeping it watered, and it's just going to kind of fill a gree through and add some great texture and color. Right. I love the, the foliage on it because it is so different from a lot of the other And the flowers it. are so large. Yes. I mean, really, it's got some nice, beautiful color to it. So let's talk about one more kind of drought tolerant. Um, this one really hasn't kicked it into high gear yet. It's you know, early. It's early. It's just kind of <laughs> cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they are just a little bit slower. This is our truffle up pink. And so this just looks like little button buttons all through the landscape. It becomes a quite a large plant. No deadheading, drought tolerant. And is that more of an upright? It is. Yeah. So it's going to go about 28 inches tall, and it's just going to kind of fill your landscape with a soft pink color. Okay. So, so would, another one for good for borders yes. or in, in a container, in a container pot. pot. But you don't yeah. really need very many in a pot because it does get so big. Okay. So Great. another one that we have is in the heliotrope family. Now, I always like to point out to my customers, heliotrope, is toxic, especially if you have a puppy around really? or small children. So you just kind of want to be mindful of that. And, you know, maybe this isn't the plant for you if you do have a puppy this year. Um, this is their new heliotrope called Augusta Lavender. Um, beautiful light purple color. However, the fragrance is missing. Okay. So, you know, maybe if you like the look of heliotrope, but you can't handle the fragrance because of allergies, this is a better plant for you. Okay. okay. And it's a different color. Than it is a different color. Mm-hmm. And then moving on, some of the double impatient. Yep. So if you have shade plants in your yards, this is in the Rocapuco series. Look like little mini rosebuds. Perfect in a low light area. So that works really well. Great for that. And then this guy we were talking earlier. And this is in the James Britannia family. So it kind of looks like a bacopa. It's going to trail like a bacopa, but it handles the heat that bacopa does not. So perfect in a basket or a container pot. And these come in a couple of different colors. They right? do. Yeah. So that is just a lovely one. Now we do have the salvia. Um, this salvia is a little bit smaller, so it's only going to go 30 inches tall. So this is the unplugged pink color. These are the catkins. They're going to open up with some gorgeous blooms. Um, 30 inches tall, great hummingbird magnet. So we also have fallen in love with the sunflowers from Proven Winters. It becomes more of a shrub. You're looking at a plant that's going to go about three foot tall, three foot around, nice big yellow bush, no deadheading, solid colors. Really? Wow. And it it blooms for that long? It does. Because you think of them as just like a fall bloomer. Correct. Super easy. And the last one to talk about today is the new jazzberry, and it's the Vista Petunia. It's going to perform like the bubble gum that we all have come to love but in a light purple color. That's it. So some fun, great new goodies from, from Proven Winners. And so, Diane, people that are coming down, I'm assuming you're open every day now. We are. <laughs> yes. So check the website, check Facebook. We are here every day. And you are doing a lot of posts on social media these days. We are, and we've been filming lots of videos and posting on YouTube as well. Yeah. So if you're in the market for something new, need a new splash of color for your garden, a basket, a planter, something for the yard, make sure you come down and see Diane down at Wabra Farms. You'll follow them on the social media sites, go to the website, or just come down to the nursery and check it out for yourself. So Diane, thanks for having us today. Thanks Looking for visiting. In the garden. Happy gardening. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. At Portland Nursery, we believe that gardening is a creative endeavor that enriches our experience, enlivens the spaces around us, and provides a safe haven for the mind. Portland Nursery has everything you need to make your space feel unique, inviting, and exciting. From houseplants and hedges to trees, tools, veggies, and herbs, our selection is always growing and changing, just like you. Come visit us today at 50th and Stark, 90th and Division. 
For over 100 years, Collier Arbor Care and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Join Garden Time as we hit the road again. In September of 2022, we'll travel to Holland and Belgium. We'll visit the world famous Allsmere Flower Auction, Flora World, the University Gardens of Ghent, and the Japanese Gardens of The Hague. We'll also visit the once-a-decade Floriade Expo, the World's Fair of Gardening. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and tastes of Ghent, The Hague, and Amsterdam on this wonderful tour. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information, and we'll see you in Europe. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. We're filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit 5, east of Salem. Well, I'm with Amanda, we're out at Backyard Bird Shop. And Amanda, not only do you guys do birds, but you also do other little animals, right? Oh yes, we do lots of different animals. And one of the fun ones that we spend a big part of our day talking about are squirrels. You know, people kind of love the squirrels. And there's a couple different different types of squirrels that we know is around. So we've got area. two main native squirrels in our area. One is the Douglas squirrel, and that's your smallest backyard squirrel. Right. And it's only gonna be about 12 inches from, from nose to tip of the tail. They're right. really adorable. But then you see the bigger, the bigger ones, ones right? right? That's about twice the size of Western gray squirrel. But they are limited in population right now, so we're really doing everything we can to protect right, them. Right, because they're kind of a little protected species. Exactly. So what are some of the things that we might need in our yard if we wanna you know, feed and attract these squirrels? So we're standing kind of in front of our squirrel wall with lots of different squirrel feeders and here's a cute um, picnic table that you can put a little um, we've got the little screws that go inside there and you can put corn in there we also have a variety of nut mixes that have a variety of tree nuts we offer filberts shelled That's filberts right. and then peanut raw peanuts in the shell and out of the shell all great ways to bring squirrels into your yard and watch them when they're funny and antics. Right, because they have lots of other things. You know, they tend to like, you know, some of the bird foods and other the plants and things like that too. But oh, we're, absolutely. We're kind of, is there a special feed that we need to worry about well, with the squirrels? Well, yeah, or? so that's kind of some of them, some of our mixes, our squirrel mixes have sunflower seeds in them because as any bird feeder knows that the squirrels also love the sunflower right. seeds, but then a lot of the mixes also have a lot of the tree nuts in them that they enjoy as well. Okay, so there are different different feeders and different mixes. Absolutely, that and then we've got corn, um, corn cobs and then we also have like this compressed corn that kind of lasts a little bit longer and it's really hard so it's great for them to kind of sharpen their teeth on. Right because we like to have you know a wide range of wildlife in our in our yard so it's great to attract these. Lots of us do and lots of us love watching the squirrels and their funny behaviors right. for sure. Because it definitely shows that kind of the overall health of a, of a garden is to have a wide population Absolutely. of, of di different animals. We want the squirrels, we want the bees, we want a wide variety of birds. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So if we're, you know, we have the, you know, the other thing you want to attract and bring the squirrels to your yard, but you also have ones or things that maybe detract from getting so the So as many times as we talk about how to bring squirrels into your yard, we also talk a lot about how to keep them out of your yard. And so we have a wide variety of ways to do that safely without harming the squirrels. Um, one of the ways we have is we have caged feeders and we have caged feeders both with, for seed and for suet and this is an example of one of our caged suet feeders and this is a good way to help block the squirrels from getting into your um, the food that you're offering just for the birds and gotcha. so some people that feed squirrels also want to feed the birds without the squirrels eating the bird right. food. Another way um, to do it is these um, 
sorry, these handy dandy, um, this is called a squirrel buster. This is kind of our <laughs> most popular, famous um, squirrel buster. And so it's weight driven. And so okay. birds, even as large as the northern flicker, can sit right here on this perch and eat the seed from the feeder. Oh, right. But if a squirrel gets on it, he pulls it down and it blocks. And it blocks the access. Yeah, so it's super it. awesome. Super awesome to block the access. We also have baffles that you can hang above a feeder or baffles to put on a pole underneath to keep the squirrel from climbing up the pole to get to the seed. Right. So, so those you know, are good we ways. We want to keep, you know, the squirrels can have their, their food in their area and let the birds have those because, you know, the squirrels are a little bit more aggressive. And they Absolutely. Eat that. They are. <laughs> and sometimes they will chase off your birds. Right. And so you want to be able to provide food just for the birds at times. Um, one other way to kind of keep the squirrel food, the squirrels off of your bird's food is to provide hot spicy. Our birds don't have the, the taste receptors to be able to That's taste the, the hot spice, but the mammals, like squirrels, do. And so oftentimes they don't like any hot meat. So we have, um, we have hot sunflower seeds and then we have a variety of hot suets that most squirrels don't eat. Every now and then there's a Cajun loving squirrel, but for the <laughs> most part, they don't like that. And so we're able to provide hot spicy foods for just our birds, but then the squirrels stay away from it. Gotcha. And then I saw one other one over there. Yo, that's yes, a... Niger. So the squirrels don't like Niger. This is also, some folks call it thistle, but our goldfinches and our lesser goldfinches, a lot of our finch family love to eat Niger, and that's not something that will attract the squirrels also. Gotcha. So, you know, you, you and your staff have, you know, a massive supply and great selection down here and very knowledgeable about you know, any questions somebody may have. So it's important to come in and talk about it, it because a lot of times it's not as simple as just putting a baffle up if it's too close to a tree that they can jump over. So we like to have a nice long conversation about what's best for the situation in your backyard. Right, kind of what they want to attract, what they want to head out and kind of, you know, their situation. And you have something for everybody. We try to, right. yeah. So you'll, you'll need more information on this. Make sure you come down and talk to Amanda and her staff down at the Backyard Bird Shops or you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over to their website. So Amanda, we appreciate all the information and we look forward to being out in our garden, bringing for the birds and the squirrels. Thank you Thanks. so much. So it is late winter and we do have some chores around our home and garden. So I am with Tom Combs from Bonide, who's gonna tell us all about moss care. So tell us about what we should be doing now in okay, the garden. Okay, I will. So now is the time. Uh, we're early, early spring, actually late winter. Um, and uh, you know, there's one guarantee here in the Northwest is we <laughs> grow moss literally everywhere. everywhere. Lawns, flower beds, the roof, the deck, the back patio. Um, so we've got a number of products that um, can be used safely. And the first one in my hand, um, and I'd like to stress safely, if you'll note or um, take a close look at that tan shoulder on the front mm -hmm. of the label, um, that is a way that we do some color coding in our products and that signifies that it's a natural product. This is potassium salts of fatty acids. Um, it comes in a convenient ready to spray nozzle, meaning the garden hose connects here this is an on and off switch, and that will spray or throw about 25 feet. Wow. Okay, so this product, Moss Max, in a ready to use spray head, um, is formulated for hard surfaces. Okay, so the roof, the deck, the back patio, a cobblestone hardscape. Um, and the back of the label, believe it or not, talks about being able to use it on hardwood ornamentals. Okay. Uh, where we get kind of that, that grayish lichen that grows on mm -hmm. um, our hardwood ornamentals as well as the green forest moss and Moss Max will turn it black in a short period of time. Oh, okay. So I know that all the directions are on there. They really have great directions and you should always read them. So, but today it's kind of a blustery day. So is that a good day? <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> it's really wet. Uh, it is wet, it is windy as you can probably see. And so ideally, a day like today is not the time okay. to do it. So um, like we mentioned, this is late winter, early, early spring. Um, so these are the products. Let's just wait for a little bit calmer, drier day uh -uh. to apply it. Well, it's a good teaching moment. Yes. You know, and we do have those sunny breaks, those dry breaks and calm breaks and really just watch for it. Have all your supplies and then you're ready to go. Yep. Well said. All right. And then what other kind? I see that you have a spreader and you have a bag. Yep. So the other product I have is our granular product. Again, this is called Moss Max. Okay. Now this is an iron-based product. It will turn 
lawn moss, it will turn moss in a flower bed black in 24 hours. Wow. Okay. So this bag is 20 pounds. It will treat 5,000 square feet and it is easily used through a broadcast spreader like this. All right. Or you can also use a drop spreader. Okay. Now, a lot of our lawns, we like to border up to a sidewalk or a hardscape. Mm. So remember, this is a granular product. It is iron base. So if you're applying it with a broadcast spreader and you happen to get some of it onto the hardscape, that's okay. Uh, uh, blow it off, broom it off, or water it off with your hose shortly after you've applied it. And then it won't stain it. It's not and it will not stain it, it. Wow. yeah. So is there a next step after we apply the Moss Max to the lawn? Yes, and thanks for bringing that up. So step one, get the Moss Max granulars on the ground. Wait 24 to 48 hours, you'll see it turn quickly black. And at that point, we know the moss in the lawn or the moss in the flower bed is dead, but we still have to get rid of it, mm. okay? So in the lawn, you can use a thatching rake, you can use a metal tine rake, you could use a stiff leaf rake and just physically get it out of the lawn. Okay. And the same is true for the flower beds, okay? Now back to the lawn, once it's removed, you're gonna find that the lawn is very thin. So early spring would be a great time to be doing some overseeding and getting that lawn thickened back up. Yeah, and that's a great tip because you really wanna get those holes filled in before the moss comes back or weeds. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and then Tom, how can we find these products? Okay, just go to www.bonide.com and you can find out everything you want about Moss Max and all of our other products. Ah, great. Yeah. So there's all that information on their website. You can always go to gardentime.tv and you can click over to that and find out even where you're gonna be able to get these products for your home and garden. Tom, thanks so much. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Start your new Subaru story at Capital Subaru. We are like nothing else. From the moment you step through these doors, you see it, you feel it. We do things differently here. Our people, our culture, our customer experience. Tell us what you're looking for and we'll upgrade the way you shop for Subarus. When you're just browsing, need great service, or starting your next adventure, we're always here for you. It's your story at Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Color, color, color. When you think of your garden, think of color. Then think of Margie's Farm and Garden. High quality plants and great customer service are our trademark. We make sure you're happy with every purchase. Whether you're a first time gardener or a seasoned professional, we'll help you be successful every time you step into your garden. Vegetables or herbs, hanging baskets or perennials, trust Margie's Farm and Garden, just off I-5 near Aurora. Join Garden Time as we hit the road again. In September of 2022, we'll travel to Holland and Belgium. We'll visit the world famous Alsmeer Flower Auction, Flora World, the University Gardens of Ghent, and the Japanese Gardens of The Hague. We'll also visit the once a decade Floriade Expo, the World's Fair of Gardening. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and tastes of Ghent, The Hague, and Amsterdam on this wonderful tour. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information, and we'll see you in Europe. If you're looking for the highest quality plants to take your garden to the next level, look no further than M&M Herb Nursery. Rosie and her staff grow huge, beautiful plants, including all your favorites. We also have some cool tropical plants that can transform your garden into a paradise. We have a large selection of pollinator plants, especially for hummingbirds, plus specialty perennials, baskets, pots, and yes, even herbs. Come see all of our great plants at M&M Herb Nursery in Hubbard. I'm at Garland's Nursery with Lee Powell. And Lee, you always have such interesting plants. And this is a collection of kind of specific plants for a specific area. Yes, so we chose plants that will grow in the full sun, 
but will also grow in the shade. Cool. Um, and as a landscape architect, I'm constantly doing designs where it's a new landscape. You plant a tree. What can you plant under it that's going to do well in the sun? But then also, once it gets shade, it'll still do well. Right. So I, I chose these plants. I think we've got a good grouping. Some do a little better with some shade. Mm -hmm. Some do a little better with some sun. But with if you take some precautions, you can get them to grow in either. So just watch the water. The water would be the key thing sure. for the shade plants. Mm -hmm. You know, once in they the get sun. in the hot sun, they usually require a little more to keep them looking nice. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that's good because everyone has that kind of issue. It's like it's sunny and then it's not. And so I, I think you picked a good, a good idea here. Excellent. Excellent. Glad to hear it. <laughs> so start on your side there. All right. So I've got first a grass. This is Carl Forrester feather reed grass. And it gets like four or five feet tall, nice. sends up plumes. It's actually starting to send them up right now. Early, yeah. And then uh, it'll look fantastic. Uh, it'll turn buff color in the fall. It will uh, look good until probably Christmas time is usually when I cut mine down. Gets nice. about five or six feet tall. It's deer resistant, nice. fairly drought resistant. Pretty good, tough all round plant. Excellent, excellent. Um, next, I have a hydrangea. This one is called Strawberry Shake. Cool. And it's a panicle style hydrangea that's going to have white flowers that turn a tinge of pink to them. It's one of those that isn't going to want to be in a spot that's between a sidewalk and a south facing wall of a house. Mm -hmm. It takes full sun, but that's a little bit too much too full much. sun. And it will require quite a bit of water in the summer to get it to, to go through. But it, the blooms from midsummer all the way to frost. Ah, uh, that is nice. It's nice to have that shape and color. Absolutely. This is a native. I thought I'd throw a native in here. Uh, Oregon grape, our state flower. And it'll grow in anything from full sun to full shade, super drought resistant, deer resistant, uh, just a tough as nails plant that uh, looks pretty nice year round. Wonderful. And then another, another shrub here, this is such a pretty green. And this is a holly, but no pointy leaves. Nice. It's a Japanese holly. And we have one of these planted out here at the nursery in full shade and it still looks fantastic. It will be a little looser in the shade as far as the, the habit than it is in the sunshine. But uh, really tough, durable plant, takes the place of a boxwood and looks a little more natural, but ties things together all season long. Nice, nice. And then a beautiful, beautiful foxglove. Foxgloves are a great plant for sun and shade. They're a biennial, so they bloom every other year. Um, this one's called Arctic Fox Rose, which is kind of a new, newer variety with a cool color. It's mm -hmm. got the pink, but a little bit of an apricot color inside the blossom. Nice, nice. Yeah. And this is such an interesting texture of, of colors there. Yes, that is a fleece flower. And there are a number of them that will grow in shade or sun. This one is called, and I will look really quickly, Red Dragon. Fantastic burgundy color. It's another one that will need a little more water if you're putting it in the full sun. All right. And columbines, it's still columbine time. Yes, they're kind of on the edge of their time to flower, but quite often, you know, you'll cut them back, they'll bloom again, and they will grow in the sun or the shade. In the full hot sun, the plant looks a little worse for wear uh, as you get into summer. Right. But it will bloom, and, you know, once it starts looking bad, you can just cut it off nice. and, you know, it'll come back next year. Excellent. And then the last one here and full card geranium. So this is a hardy geranium, looks a lot different from the traditional geraniums. Right. And these will grow in sun or shade. They get a little more gold colored in the sun and in the shade, they're going to be a little more chartreuse. It does spread out quite a bit, um, but it makes a, a fantastic garden plant. Oh, it is, it's such a great color. We went through so many great plants. You always pick out a great collection and you have so many nice plants here at Garland Nursery. Yes. And I know in a couple weeks, Ryan is going to be with you and talking about some more plants. So we're just going to do a tea so you, sh you tune in then to see Lee again with more shrubs in just a few weeks. But please come on down to Garland Nursery and see what you can bring home to your house. Thanks so much. Thank you. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens.
DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Come to where the color is. Come to Egan Gardens. We've worked hard growing healthy plants for you so that your gardening is easy. Add sparkle to your garden with our perennials, container plants, and skillfully designed baskets and planters. Stop and get a mood lifter out here on the farm. We have lots of fresh air and lots of space. There's lots of blooming plants, new vegetable starts, shrubs, and berry bushes. Egan Gardens, where it's all about the plants. We're located west of I-5 at exit 263 on River Road. At Sagawa Nursery, we always talk about taking your garden from ordinary to extraordinary. For us, that means bringing you the newest and best plants and unique garden items to you, our customer. For you, that means we'll help you transform your garden into something that's extraordinary. We also have some great gift items and even a few surprises for inside your home, too. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. I'm out here at Rare Plant Research. I'm with Burl. Burl, today we are talking olives. Sounds great to me. And you know, olives are one of those things that you know we don't think of necessarily as being able to grow in the Northwest, mm -hmm. but actually we can. We can. Actually, the first olive tree that I had was about 20 years ago, planted it right against the house, never thought it would make it. Well, 10 years later, I dug it up and moved it to our new place, and it's still in the garden, and now it's like 10 feet high. So they really can, uh, the secret I think is um, the trunk has to be about three quarters of an inch in diameter or so for them to be really hardy. If they're small, like in this plant, um, you'd want to protect it if it got like much below 20 degrees. Okay. 20 degrees, no problem. Um, We've even heard of stories where they've actually gone to 15 below zero, frozen clear to the ground, but come back from oh, the wow. That's like unheard of, but it happened here in Oregon. Right. <laughs> so it's kind of surprising. You know, we've, we've heard of, you know, like an Arbicina olive mm -hmm. here in Northern, but there's many more varieties that are actually- There's like over 200 different varieties. Yeah. Um, and I braise about, well, I don't know, uh, at least a dozen different um, cultivars. Um, Franchoya is one that I think is going to do well. It produces a lot. Olives are bigger than Arbicina, uh, and um, they're just really prolific and, and really hardy. But the key for most of them is the trunk diameter. We're finding that a lot of them that California says, oh, these aren't very hardy, they're just as hardy for us as oh, really? some of the others. So it's kind of amazing. So if we're, you're planting these in the yard, you know, mm -hmm. being hardy, what kind of requirements do they need? Okay, grow? they need um, well-drained soil. And so around here, if we have heavy clay, it's kind of an issue. So if you uh, plant them on a mound, you know, mound the, 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 the soil up, uh, some real fast-draining soil, maybe with some sand or gravel in it, you know, uh, 18 inches high, planted in that, you should be fine. Okay. Um, I planted some in our garden, it's on a slope, and it's really heavy clay, and I actually dug a beer hole, put real fast draining soil, and then I put a drain pipe in the bottom so it would run down the hill, and it's been in the ground for, oh, 10 or 12 years. It's been no problem. You know, and we're looking at like these varieties that are already flowering, and you have one next to you too that's actually has some fruit on yes. it at a very young age. Yes, these, um, that was the, the flower, this is, these were in a heated greenhouse, and uh, so they're a little bit farther along than outside. Outside now, they're just starting to break bud. Um, and so, um, and these, uh, well, these are raised from cuttings, and so they, they flower and fruit really young. Yeah. Um, if you raise them to the seed, it would be, oh, 10 or 15 years before they oh, first right, right. <laughs> yeah. But you know, you're talking about the, you know, the large one up, up in the garden. Uh -huh. So let's go take a look at that one and that so we can see how big of these are actually. That sounds be. good. Mm -hmm. So Pearl, now we're out here in your landscape, uh -huh. and this is obviously a very mature olive plant. Yes, this is about, uh, about 40, 45 years old. Oh, wow. Um, and you can see that I've planted it 
uh, an erased bed because what we're standing on is actually heavy clay soil and you can see we're at about 18 inches above the ground. I've got gravel and some compost and stuff mixed in there and you can see it's doing really well. Yeah, it is. It's been in the ground about 10 years. And it's, you know, looking at the shape of this, it's not necessarily like a tree form that we would think. It's more like a large shrub or something. Yes, actually, olives really, uh, um, they pup a lot and they have a lot of suckers and so you got to actually trim those off. Otherwise, it'll just be a huge shrub. And usually you want to open them up so they kind of spread out. Okay. Like, you know, so they're open and then you can have more uh, area for olives and tree, uh, leaves and stuff like that. So you can see how this kind of opens up. Right. Uh, it's not just a single trunk that goes up. You know, and then this one, you know, we saw the ones down in the greenhouse mm -hmm. that were just starting to flower because it's been a little bit warmer. Mm -hmm. But you know, the flower, when does the flowering usually come Usually on? it's early June, uh, okay. sometimes late May. This year, uh, this late, they're just, the buds are just starting to swell now. Uh, it's wind pollinated, so it's good to have two trees. And you don't always necessarily need two trees, but it's good to have okay. two different varieties. And so the wind blows and, and it pollinates it that way. And then, you know, after it's flowering, when do, when do you fruit? When well, it, when uh, do you typically, harvest? we pick usually around in November, sometimes as late as December. It just depends. Um, if you're gonna make oil, which is kind of hard to do because you have to have an oil press, right. and they're like $100,000, so <laughs> you don't, no, most people don't want to have right. one of those. Uh, but if you cure them with salt, like what we do, and brine, then it takes about a month to, um, to cure them. And uh, you can pick them actually green, and they're still really, really good when you brine them. If you pick them too green when they're, um, uh, you know, if you're going to make oil, the oil can be a little hot. Um, but there's really no way that the homeowner can make um, a, a oil without that press. Right. <laughs> but you do have some. Let's go inside the conservatory and check out what you have. That for sounds service. good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Burl, now we're out here at the conservatory at uh -huh. the Villa Catalana, and these are olives that you harvested last year, right? That's exactly right. Yeah. So, so what do we? How do we get the olives off the tree mm -hmm. to something like? This? Well, I have a little. It's, it's a little hand kind of thing you can buy that you can just break them off the um, the the tree, and then you brine them. And so you take um, a real um, a, a lot of salt in water, and you change the salt every week. You soak them in there, okay. and it takes about a month and a half, oh, and wow. then they're done. And that's it, and then you just eat it? They just, just eat them, just yeah. Like that. And they can stay in a refrigerator for a year or two, and they're fine. And then, so if somebody you know, wants to come purchase olives, mm -hmm. you actually have a sale coming up next weekend. That's right, we do. Uh, the 21st and 22nd, and from 11 to 4, our nursery is going to be open for the public. It's only a couple times a year that we're open for the public. Right, which is it's kind of a rare, rare occasion. So you it have is. the olives, but you also have you know, oh, an, an amazing array agaves. of of rare, Bulbs, rare plants. I mean, all kinds of, this forms all kinds of things. Right. <laughs> and you also have, you know, wine tasting. As a matter of <laughs> fact, we do. Uh, our wine room will be open at Saturday and Sunday as well. And this year, not by appointment. So, so you, can, you, you can just show up. They just show up, yeah. So better yet. So, you know, so if you're looking for, you know, some rare plants, if you're looking for olives, if you're looking for wine tasting, mm -hmm. make sure you come out here to Rare Plant Research, Villa Catalana, mm -hmm. and do a little wine tasting, pick up some plants next weekend. It's going to be an amazing event. So, Burl, I appreciate all the information, and I'm looking forward to a little of this and some of that. That sounds <laughs> great to me. Nestled in the oaks of the Willamette Valley is a nursery that is truly exceptional. At Out in the Garden Nursery, you will find a vast array of shade plants, ornamental grasses, and hardy perennials. Let us help you bring color and texture into your garden. We offer over 100 types of perennials. Many of our plants are evergreen for year-round interest. Plus, we offer the best in personal attention. Out in the Garden Nursery, where we grow great gardens one plant at a time. For 90 years, Espoma has one guiding principle, develop the finest organic gardening products that work in harmony with nature, grow beautiful gardens, and make a greener world for the future. From our soil products to our plant foods, we have always been committed to the environment and sustainability. We use a vast array of natural and organic ingredients and package them in our 100% solar powered plant. Look for the quality line of Espoma products at your local independent garden center. Espoma, organic from the beginning. Peonies, bold and beautiful, an old favorite, but ever new, and perfect for your garden. At Adelman Peonies, you'll find hundreds of different peonies, bush, ito, and tree peonies covering 20 acres. Come stroll the display garden, then find a special plant or bouquet to take home. Join us any day of the week for beautiful color or weekends for special events. 
Adelman Peonies is just east of I-5 at exit 263 on Brook Lake Road or online at peonyparadise.com. Garland Nursery, a must-stop destination for those that want to play with plants and grow with their garden. Whether you are a new or a seasoned gardener, Garland Nursery can help fulfill your gardening desires and your landscape needs. From organic veggies, trees and shrubs, to colorful blooms, from the newest trends in garden supplies and garden decor, shop Garland Nursery to find that perfect plant or piece that fills you and your garden with delight. It's always a beautiful day at Garland Nursery. I'm out here at Sagawa Nursery, I'm with Brian. Brian, there are so many focal points that we can put in pots and containers, and we're just looking around, and the amount of grasses that you guys carry is, is a lot. There's a lot of grass, especially choices of grasses. You know, they're coming out with the grass, and then, like everything else, a couple other right behind it that come in yellow or blue, but yeah, what other way for a different uh, contrast of foliages? You know, you get the different, uh, habits or things you know though i'd say the only downfall would be some of these are kind of go deciduous in the winter right and have a little slow time waking up but there are a lot of gra evergreen grasses and there's a lot of choices that come with but what better way especially summertime i think to me it just has that kind of a cooling effect you know kind of looks just looks right. really nice and when you're doing like containers it really does make make a focal point it does you know like so starting around here you know you got this cord line with just this electric color. It is, you know, I think a lot of it, just like the formiums or anything else, they have like a backlight, you know, like in the sun hits it just right, it kind of uh, illuminates, or I mean, some of these, um, especially the quarter lines, like you're saying, there's probably gotta be about 10 different uh, varieties of that. Right. So they come in every color, but most of them are uh, central stock that like a uh, palm-like right. habit. And then you have some, you know, some lower ones, like in the bright goldens, right. like some of the carrots. Yep, some 12 inches on up, you know, there's a lot of, there's a couple at really small, but you know, right at uh, say nine to 12 inches, uh, creates a nice little tuft or bigger. And, uh, and then you can see they come in yellow, blue, green, I mean, every color right. to offer. And the nice thing about the carrots is they are evergreen. They'll stay in there year All the round. All the carrots, yes, that's pretty. And then you have some like the, you know, the papyrus. Yes. Grasses like that that make a really big statement, like this one here, which is a uh, king tut. King tut, yes. And I then, believe that's. And then baby tut in front oh, yeah. of it. Right behind it, you got the, the dwarf one. Actually, works well in water gardening too. Uh, you got to change the soil mix a little bit, but you know what easier way to create a little interest in the ponds or, uh, you know, back to just add something different in that right from the you know and a lot of these will do you know a lot of a lot of full sun and add the focal point but there's even some of the grasses that do well in the shadier Shady. areas yep. like th like this guy here which yep. one's that that's the hackanocles or the forest grasses yep. yep they will they um again there's probably three four and more different varieties of that most of them are like green and yellow green and white or you know but uh, a lot of them are just variegated with uh, different different colors off right I guess, yeah Pretty good shady areas, and then you have yep. back. You know, you talked about the formiums, uh -huh. which are going to get get much larger. So if you have a big, bigger space, yep. and those also come in come in the way of colors. They they do have a t I don't know how many different ones, but yes, there's a many different ones. Now the, some of those are kind of partially, you know, the formiums, the king touch. You may need to choose select wisely. You may have to protect for the winter. Right. But yeah, what easier way to do it when they're in a container? You can move them in and out. Right. You know, so then when you're doing your containers, you have your focal point like this. And with an array of colors yes. and so many different annuals and bedding plants yeah. and other perennials you can go with it, that's you can really kind of tailor your, your color choices oh, yeah. and, and color combinations. That's, right. that's when the fun begins. You know, you can just fill it in with uh, all your favorite color coordinations of your liking. So right. You don't just have to have flowers. You can have something that's that right. like yeah. this. Grasses work well with everything, I think. Right. So if you're looking for a great selection of grasses, you know, something different to put in your pots and containers, you know, come out to Sagawa Nursery, visit Brian and his staff and try something new and different this year. Now that our spring bulbs have died down and the foliage is kind of starting to disappear, we want to mark where those bulbs are for the summertime because you know, how many times have we been in there and dug up in our yard to plant something in the summer and up comes a bunch of bulbs. So our good tip is to take a rock right on the rock what it is that's planted underneath it. You can just set that rock in your garden and now you know where your bulbs are for next year. And that is our tip of the week.
Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. Surround yourself with wonderful color this summer. It's time for the annual spring sale at Hydrangeas Plus. Hydrangeas are the perfect plant for any garden, large or small. We are cleaning out our nursery, so come and take some plants home to your garden. We're offering special, once a year pricing on nearly everything we grow. Also, check out our selection of grasses and other blooming perennials. It's the annual spring sale at Hydrangeas Plus. Do you have a leaning or broken fence? Fix a broken fence with ease. Made in Oregon, the sturdy fence post bracket can mend your drooping fence. Strong winds, falling debris, dry rot, and wayward drivers can all cause havoc on your once sturdy fence. Our sturdy bracket attaches to your existing fence and is easily installed in 30 minutes. Limit waste, materials, and save money by fixing your existing fence. Purchase online at sturdfence.com or visit participating PAR Lumber and Pro Build stores. Since 1929, Grimm's Fuel has powered great gardens around our area. With our comprehensive composting and yard debris services, we can apply quality garden mulch, compost, and blended soils with our experienced crews and trucks, including our landscape rock and bark products as well. We are proud of our industry-leading state-of-the-art composting facilities. We also can take care of your fuel oil and firewood needs. Grimm's Fuel, building great gardens since 1929. Hey everybody, Brian Bauman from Bauman's Farm and Garden and I'm in our greenhouse checking on our tomatoes who have been patiently waiting for Mother Nature to get her act together. The good news is, is that this weekend is May 15th, the last average frost date in Oregon, which means it's time to put these beauties in the garden. I picked out three of my favorite early varieties, starting with Oregon Spring, which was actually developed at Oregon State University from start to finish about 60 days, and it's a determinate variety, which means it's gonna set on all of its tomatoes all at once. The next is the classic Early Girl. This is an indeterminate variety, which means it sets on its tomatoes throughout the season, and it'll be ready starting in about 55 days. But I have one last variety I wanna show you. Come follow me. All right, last but not least is 4th of July. This tomato is ready start to finish in about 49 days, and it's another indeterminate variety, which means it'll set on its tomatoes throughout the summer. A little tip, plant it deep in the ground, maybe all the way up to here, so all of this turns into roots and you end up with a bigger, sturdier plant later on. And this weekend only at Bauman Farms, all of our tomatoes, four inch, are buy five for $10. Come out out to the farm, we look forward to seeing you soon. I am at Out in the Garden Nursery with Carol, and Carol, we love coming out here at any time of the year because you have the most beautiful display gardens. Thank so you. lovely. Really worth to come out to this dry, you know, drive to come out from the city or wherever you live to see it. And I think um, today you have some beautiful plants. I don't see any flowers, but what is your philosophy with this group of plants? Well, I'm a foliage person overall. I think it's really, I love flowers, They're, but I look at them as a bonus. I don't <laughs> buy a plant just because of the, the flowers. I, like, I prefer to go for foliage. So I've picked a lot of things that here, it's very, very early spring, they're just coming up, but they're gonna give us a long season of interest with or without flowers. Oh, okay, so what do you have? So we'll start here. These are a couple um, Acteas. They used to be Simicifugas. They have beautiful foliage. This is a green, and obviously this is a beautiful dark. This is brunette. Um, they're a wonderful color texture all season. They don't bloom until September, October. Nice. And nice. then they're fragrant too. Ah, and sun or shade? They're actually partial shade. Right. Um, keep them out of the hot sun. Little morning sun keeps the color better. All right, and then this one is kind of chartreuse. Yeah, that's the same. That's a triceratus. It's another one. Comes up early, beautiful foliage, has a really interesting purple flower late in the season. Usually, uh, this one's about August, so it's a little bit early. But so you just have most of your season is just the foliage, and then you have a really interesting flower later and on. And it looks like orchids. That one's a gorgeous yes, one. Yes, they're really amazing. And then this I love, because I don't even, I've never seen a flower on it. Yeah, this is an Aurelia. This is Sun King. Gets to be a huge foliage plant. They're easily three by three. I've heard of mature ones bigger than that. Mm -hmm. They are supposedly have a white flower and a, and a black <laughs> um, berry, but it's I don't think I've ever seen one either. It's or it's underneath so much you don't even see it because you're looking at that beautiful right, foliage. But stunning foliage. Exactly. That chartreuse is gorgeous. It and is. then these look like ferns, but they're not. They're not. That's what I love about these. These are a runcus, and actually I like a runcus better than a stilbe's. Mm. Um, they don't have the color range when they do bloom that a stilbe does. They have little creamy white flowers. Um, but they're much more drought tolerant uh -huh. and and they're much more. 
versatile. You know, it still bees, they get too dry, that's the end of them. Mm -hmm. um, but I just love these are a couple different kinds of aruncus. These are medium height. There's some dwarf and there's some large ones. And for as shade. Well. And they're shade as well. They're very okay. versatile. And then these kind of look like onions, maybe? They are. They're an allium. So they're okay. they're more in the chai family. They're not the bulb kind. They're the more they well, I take like it back. Clumps. This one has a bulb. This okay. one actually is a clump. This is a little nodding one, has a beautiful little delicate um, lavender flower in May and June. It's a nice rock garden plant. Um, this is um, a more in the chive side of the family. This is Tangudium. Has a nice big two inch lavender flower in um, June and July. Cool the bees love oh, them. And we do and want to talk about these. Yes, sure. the bees really, really love them. They come up really early, so you have this interesting strappy foliage now, and then you have beautiful flowers in the summer. Great. And a sedum. You don't even think about sedums this early, but they're so cute, the foliage. They are. And they come up early, so you have this foliage really, really early. And then, of course, they have beautiful fall flowers that actually hold into winter and just. Uh, and that's for sun. That's for sun. Yeah, both them and the alliums are sun. And then another ferny plant. This is another. Yeah, I like, again, <laughs> textures, things that look like other things that aren't those. Sure. Um, this is an Artemisia Gijou group. It's um, a lot of people know the silver ones that are mm -hmm. very drought tolerant. Right, right. And, totally but, different. But yeah, totally different. This one is not drought tolerant. It's a sun lover, but it wants some regular summer water. But it's also a summer bloomer. So it oh, ends nice. up with three to four foot little clusters of white flowers. Um, sometimes I like almost the bloom process because it has these big stems that come up really slowly. And then they open to these little tiny flowers. Very cool. But they're not real showy flowers individually, but in mass, they're very lovely. And they're July, August. Oh, nice. And then you have a collection of hardy geraniums. I love hardy geraniums. It's one of my favorite plant groups. They're just so versatile they're so easy sun to part shade on most of them some are end up like this is one that i just love it's called kamina it's called it's a beautiful um, foliage plant it does have hot pink flowers for several weeks um, but then it's just this really nice filler in the garden nice. and then this is ann thompson this is roseanne which are two of the best geraniums on mm -hmm. the market um, once they start blooming they'll bloom till fall but until they bloom they have beautiful foliage excellent and this one hit with the pink this is a, a pulmonium it's called um, stairway to heaven so it starts out very pink and then it'll end up to be a white and green cream with a little bit of pink and beautiful light blue flowers in May and June. Ah. Carol, this one has pretty dramatic foliage. What's this called? This is a ligularia. This is Brit Marie, which is the darkest ligularia in the market. Wow. That's another group of plants that I really, really like that I think are underused. Um, a lot of people don't like them. The slugs get into them and they're really Eight. sensitive for water, but they're such beautiful container they plants. Are. And they actually do have a summer flower, mm -hmm. bright orange yellow flower in the summer, which is really nice. And then all this beautiful foliage in between. Very nice. So you have to come out and see the other ligularias that she has here. It's a great place to come out in the garden nursery in Molala and really come and stroll the gardens and have a lovely afternoon. Thanks so much. Thanks for coming, Judy. Thank you for watching Garden Time today. And remember that all the local independent garden centers are filled with beautiful color and plants for your garden. And many are undercover, just like here at Wabra Farms. For more information on today's show or any of our other episodes, go to GardenTime.tv. Judy and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week on Garden Time. Join Garden Time as we hit the road again. In September of 2022, we'll travel to Holland and Belgium. We'll visit the world-famous Allsmere Flower Auction, Flora World, the University Gardens of Ghent, and the Japanese Gardens of The Hague. We'll also visit the once-a-decade Floriot Expo, the World's Fair of Gardening. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and tastes of Ghent, The Hague, and Amsterdam on this wonderful tour. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information, and we'll see you in Europe. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.